On a scale of one to five, where one is not important and five is very important, how important is video title when choosing what video to watch? You might say, very important. But if I were to just ask you what you normally focus on when choosing what video to pick, you might give me a different answer, like the thumbnail or the channel that published the video. By formatting study questions differently, we can get very different responses. In a study run by Dr. Joe Lumsden, director at the Aston Interactive Media Lab, she and her colleagues analyzed different techniques for evaluating trustworthiness of a website's design. At first, they ran a guided study, which is a study, often a questionnaire, constructed with closed multiple choice questions, which often focus on specific attributes, like the one I just asked you. In a guided study, questions are asked in a turn-by-turn -turn or question-by-question -question basis. On a scale of one to five, how important is professional design? On a scale of one to five, how important is a privacy statement? And so on. They found that a majority of the time, participants would rate four out of five, important, or five out of five, very important, for almost all of the attributes, and would rarely rate below a three for any of the named attributes. So basically, they equally valued all of the named attributes as important to some extent. And as my mother used to say, if everything is important, nothing is important. By A, identifying the attribute by name, and B, asking the participant to rate importance, the team was basically priming the participant to respond in a way that's socially desirable. I mean, who would say something like, I just don't think a professional design is important. I'd venture to guess, nobody. Yep. So the team, realizing this inflation of importance may have something to do with the format of the study, decided to run another study, this time in a slightly different format. An unguided study is more open-ended. In this case, they had the participants circle the areas of the website that made them trust it more. Granted, there are issues with asking users to evaluate trustworthiness, because in doing so, users may end up behaving in very different ways than they would behave if they were, say, shopping online or paying a bill. But that said, rather than asking users to evaluate specific features, by asking them open-ended questions and having them point out where on a page they looked to make a decision, the team was able to discover what was really important. And guess what? It wasn't even professional design. It was the VeriSign logo, a domain name registry services provider, privacy statements, and testimonials. Here, you can see the discrepancies in the results of the two studies. Fewer than 5% of people even bothered to comment on high-quality graphics, but 78% said it was important during the guided study. So what does this mean for UX practitioners? Well, if you want to understand what influences someone's decision-making process, you can't just ask people what is important because they will never tell you something is unimportant. Instead of using a guided study or survey, consider using open-ended questions so you can uncover what really matters in the moment and what people ultimately will recall about the experience. Self-reported data should always be taken with a grain of salt. After all, users don't always have a name for things, and sometimes they'll say things they don't really do. But couple it with observational research so that your research findings are sound and true.